You're in the correct spot if you landed on this video because traditional wisdom, which says study hard and avoid distractions, didn't work for you. Using different research methods, I have developed a unique way to focus during my undergraduate, graduate, and current courses. This helps me study more effectively and optimize my focus, so I have enough time in the day for the things that are important to me. It will work the same way for you, even if you have attention deficiency disorder. So stay tuned for the amazing points that have been proven to be beneficial to everyone. Overthinking and eye contact. This happens to most of the students who develop a habit of overthinking over time. This is the most annoying distraction from a focused study. While studying, you start thinking about what if I failed? What if I could not top this time? You start planning for your future, and suddenly you remember your relationship problems, your financial problems, your dream life, and so many other things. But all this is a mechanism by which the brain escapes from working on the actual hard thing that matters, which is focused learning. Try to reset your brain by reminding yourself that you don't give a damn about what will happen in the future. I just need to focus on what today offers and progress today. You can also do it by keeping your eyes on the book while reading, and even if you are recalling what you have read, try to maximize the eye contact with the book. It will help you focus, even if you are a new reader. The problem with focus, we don't seem to have an attention issue based on the fact that we can stick to our phone screens for a long time. I think that in this scenario, using your phone for fun and enjoyment has a clear purpose. So let's start with the problem that we have identified now. Why is it that when you use your phone or watch TV, you can focus quickly and easily, but when you have to study, you find it difficult to focus and keep getting distracted? A clear goal is the holy grail. I think you know about the football matches. All the hard work is to put a football in a defined area, which is called the goal. The player feels a crazy rush of dopamine when he celebrates after scoring a goal. The same is true for learning. Setting a clear, well-defined goal is extremely important. You can set a goal, like committing yourself to solving 20 problems, reading all the lecture notes you made while attending university or school, or reading 20 pages of your textbook every day. Just like when you use your phone, you obsessively scroll through it. Similarly, while studying, setting a goal creates a desire to achieve that goal. When a task is completed, this not only improves your focus, but also causes a dopamine rush that quickly motivates you to plan for the next task. Choose progression over distraction. Now, you know that you do have the capacity to make your brain concentrate while learning. But how are you going to do it? Most people advise that you should remove distractions. However, the best method to maintain hours of focus is through progressive overload, which is similar to progressively increasing the weight you lift to gain muscle in the gym. You can practice my special strategy if you want to constantly progress your focus or increase your mental stamina. My simple strategy is that when I start a task, I set a timer and stop it when I start to lose focus. This becomes my baseline target time during which I can maintain my attention. I then try to beat this baseline target after a short break. Hence, my focused study period keeps getting better as I recover from short breaks. After I had established a suitable baseline attention span, I moved over and started recording tasks instead of time. For example, if I had 20 questions to answer and needed to take notes, I would start with the 20 questions, take a short rest, and then make my notes. Because I have improved my focus, my study efficiency has improved multiple times. Baseline focus is a good tool for helping you focus for longer periods of time because it pushes you a little outside of your comfort zone, which is where you need to improve. Also, it's important to keep distractions around because, in my opinion, you will get distracted anyway. If you can demonstrate to yourself that you can focus even in the presence of obvious distractions, you can take charge of your distractions, rather than thinking that the presence of your phone alone is enough to stop you. Active attention is the key. Focusing longer won't matter if you still take a longer time to complete tasks. 
To maximize the productivity of your study sessions, you need to make sure that you are actively focused. For example, if you give yourself all day to do a simple task, even though it isn't very difficult, you will finish it by the end of the day. The problem is that you are taking longer to finish a task, even though you are focused. Active attention is the method to solve this problem. It is divided into two halves. The first is to interact with the study material rather than simply reading it. The simplest method to accomplish this is to keep summarizing what you are learning. For example, I generally divide my lectures into sections. And as I finish a segment, I quickly recap what I've been studying to demonstrate that I've been actively paying attention to it, rather than just sort of winging it and not actually engaging. So, divide your topic into small portions, learn and summarize each portion after a study session of 30 to 60 minutes, and then simply test yourself to see how much you can retain. The second aspect of this involves applying Parkinson's Law, which is to set a time limit for completing a specific amount of work. Previously, I would tell myself that I would write an essay today, but I would not set a deadline, which caused me to lose focus during the day, and my subconscious mind went into lazy mode after realizing I could easily do it. I only got back to it after wasting the whole day just to complete it in time. However, when I started giving myself a three-hour window to write an essay, I put pressure on myself to complete it. Setting a target time keeps reminding me that the deadline is approaching fast, so now I have to actively focus, and I knew that if I lost focus or time, I would fail to complete it. Doing this provides a healthy amount of stress to multiply your efficiency and concentration, restore focus. The next section of this approach is to restore focus, a method for helping anyone including those with ADHD. Because I know there are many occasions when I was reasonably well-focused and suddenly got distracted, even if it was only a few seconds, that was still enough to break my momentum. Rewiring to restore focus is the bonus tip. Practice meditation, as it will help you rewire your brain. This method is different because it only requires you to sit still for almost 10 minutes while paying attention to the rhythm of your breathing and to a spot that is just an inch into your forehead. If you notice that your attention is drifting away from these two things, try to reorganize it. You may notice that your brain shifts thoughts every 5 to 10 seconds. Active and well-timed focus is necessary to finish activities, yet most people don't study in this way. The practice of returning to a focused state during study sessions gets firmly established in your mind over time, which increases focus and ultimately increases learning. It seems like 10 minutes of intense concentration is an excellent deal, so there's no excuse not to give it a try.